going on here? I'm, I'm trying to tell you. You're making a big mistake, you people. This kid is a liar. I know it. I know all about them. Hello, everybody, and welcome to my tutorial. So, my name is Mehdi Fasset, and I mainly work into VFX, compositing 2D animation and motion design. Today, I'm gonna show you how to rig the toe of your character design using joystick and sliders with After Effects. Recently, I was rigging the face of a character, and I realized that I want to add something more to it, and it was the animation of the toe. So, normally, when we talk, our jaw moves simultaneously with the mouth, and that's why I wanted to automate the movement of the chin with the lip sync. I didn't do that before, so I had to search for a tutorial online, but unfortunately I didn't find any, so I had to roll up my sleeves and do it myself. So after some struggle, I finally found something kind of convincing to me, and so I want to share the process with you. This is not a complete step-by-step -step lesson and not for beginners as well, but I will try to show you the main process. Okay, then let's start the tutorial. So I start by creating the head, starting with the sphere should be ideal. Try to avoid a lot of points in your shapes. So go to fill and choose the color you like, then select the layer, go to content and on ellipse path you right click and you click on convert to Bezier path. I prefer to do this process to mainly all the shapes I create, but it's not necessary for all of them. So after that you click on path, you select the points you want and start personalizing your head. After you find your perfect shape, now it's time for an important step in this rig. You select path and then you go to this window. It's already opened for me, but no worries. If you can't find it, you can go to window and in the bottom you'll find this amazing beautiful window called create nulls from paths. After it's open, you will see three options. Points follow nulls, nulls follow points and trace path. So make sure you clicked on the path property in your layer and then click on points follow nodes. So now you can see that we have a null for each point of the shape. And like you see, if we move the null, the point of the shape will follow. But there is a little problem. If you pay attention to the nulls, you will see that they are a little bit distant from the points. Well, no problem. Press Ctrl Z to go back. And now, before we do the same process, you will have to select the layer and in the bottom of the properties of the shape, you will click on transform and in position make sure to change the values to zero. And now, if we do the same process as before, you will see that the nulls are perfectly adjust with the points. Okay, now I'll select the nulls and I will just change their colors to make it more visible and I will start naming them to make my project organized. It should be actually named head and not face but it's not a big deal. And now I will create a new null, I will change its color and name it face position. Select the other nodes and link them to the face position. So now I can move the head with this node. Okay, this part is a little bit tricky, so pay attention. I will select the node of the bottom and I will unlink it. Select the same node and duplicate it with Ctrl D. I will change the color just for visibility. Now select the null we unlinked and link it to the duplicated null. And then we link the duplicated null to the face position null. Make sure the face position null still move the face. Ok, so now I will name the null Chin or Joe. Create a keyframe on the position property of all the nulls unless the Chin null. 
Now go to the second keyframe of the timeline, select all the keyframes and then go to the joystick and sliders window and click on origin and then it will pass all the keyframes you choose. So now I'm assuming you already know that joystick needs 5 states. So in the first keyframe the head will be facing us. The second it will be looking left then right up and down. Now let's create the parts of the face. Starting with the eyes, I will start creating the eyeballs and then the pupils. Let's make the nose starting with the sphere and put the stroke on with the color slightly darker from the skin. So on the nose shape, select Add and click Trim Pass. And then start playing with the Start and End property until you find something you like. Ok, I'm just thinking to add a moustache and I'm trying to find out an interesting shape. Apparently the moustache is visible behind the nose, so it means the nose is not filled with color. So just click on fill and choose the skin color. So now I'm just thinking to maybe add a beard. Now you can create the eyebrows using the pen tool. And then change the stroke size. If you want to make your eyebrows round, click on the layer, go to shape, select the stroke and then in the line cap, change it from butt cap to round cap. And now I will add some dark circles. Then I will create the ears and put layers behind the head. So now let's make our mouth. Try to start it with a sphere shape. Keep in mind that we will use the stroke of the shape as lips. After you seem happy with the size, press Ctrl X to cut the layer. Create a new composition and make it smaller. Pass your mouth in it and now try to adjust composition to the mouth but make sure there is some space around it. Convert it to a VZ path and we will do the same as we did before. Go to transform and change the values of the position to zero. Align the mouth to the center and now we will start creating the 5 states of the mouth for the lip sync with the joystick and sliders. For the first keyframe it will be a neutral closed mouth. For the second, it will be like it's saying E. The third should be like an A. Ah. And before you continue, try to put a guideline next to the upper lip. And make sure that in every keyframe, the upper lip is in line with the guideline or just a little bit above it. Okay then, I will continue on the fourth keyframe making it looks like saying an O. And the last one, it will be in this shape, 
but you can try to experiment other things. So after it looks good enough for you, select the shape, duplicate it, delete these keyframes, and name it lips. Then the one below, name it mouth background. And then go to the top, select the stroke, and disable it. Now select the mouth background layer, and we will pick-whip its path property to the path property of the lips layer. So now we create a throat with a darker color from the mouth background. And we place it behind the lips. Apparently we can't see it, so it's because the lips layer shouldn't have a fill, so we just disable it. So I will create a tooth and I will do the same thing. We will add the tongue as well, so, you know, he can talk. So, I guess you notice that the elements are visible outside the mouth. So, what we will do is to duplicate the mouth background and name it mask. And then we duplicate it for each element to mask it. These mask layers will always follow the lips shape animation, cause we already linked it. And after that we just start keyframing. The position of the other elements in the five states following the shape and movement of the mouth. Then, just for more fun, I will add some wrinkles around the mouth. So, I'll go to the main composition and drag the mouth into it to have a preview on what's happening. Okay, so I will have to keyframe the wrinkles. So, let's go back to the mouth and do that. Okay, so after I finish, I try to put the joystick controller and see how it goes. So go to window, and in the bottom you will find the joystick and slider window. Select the keyframes of all the layers, and then select this button to create a controller. So 
so it will create two layers here. Select the one below and change the size and position to make it more accessible. Select the controller and now try to test how it goes. So after you test it, if you want to reset the initial position of the controller, just click on it and change the position values to zero. On the main composition, create a null and call it face movement null. Select then all the parts of the face unless the ears and the beard and link them to this mode. And now we will keyframe the position of this mode trying to follow the direction of the head. After it looks right, start adjusting the ears as well. It seems to me that the mustache is a little bit flat when it turns. So I will try to keyframe the shape as well, adjusting the perspective a little bit. Now I start keyframing the trim path of the nose. So when it looks right and left, I try to change it accordingly, and same thing for up and down. Okay, so for the beard, I will not use this layer with all these shapes. So I will create another one and adjust it with the pen tool so I could have just one single shape. Now I will copy and paste my beard in another smaller composition and adjust it like I did with the mouth. And now we drag it to the main composition. 
So I will start adjusting the beard to the other states by using the CC power pin. So we keyframe these properties and start adjusting our beard. So I noticed that we can see a little bit of background here. So I will create a simple shape with the same color of the beard. And we start keyframing it according to the beard. We place it behind the head. Now I will add maybe some specular to the eyes. And then let's make the eyelids so the poor guy could close his eyes and get some sleep sometimes. I create an eyelid with a simple square shape and put a slight darker color from the skin. And then I duplicate it for the other eyelids. And don't forget to name the layers. Now I'll mask them inside the eyeballs. We will use another way than we did with the mouth. You select the eyelids and if you go to effects then channel you will find set map. So if you go here you could select the layer of the eyeball and the eyelid will be masked from that layer. So then you will just do the same process to the other layers. Select the right eyelids and link them to the right eyeball. And then the left ones to the left eyeball. Now check and make sure that all of the five states are good. doesn't have to be perfect. So now we can actually create a joystick for the head. Select all the keyframes and press that great button there and let's see what happens. Well, it looks actually kind of cool, but there is a little problem. When we move the controller up, the head is looking down, and when we move it down, the head is looking up. Actually, it's not a big deal and I can leave it like that, but I will show you how you can fix it. So you press Ctrl Z to go back. You choose all the two last keyframes. You right click on one of them. You go to Keyframe Assistant and you click on Time Reverse Keyframes. And now let's see if it works if we repeat the same process, creating the controller. Okay, so it works perfectly. So let's now rig the eyelids. In the first keyframe, we should have the eyes closed. 
For the second keyframe I will just move down the right lower eyelid. In the third, just the left lower eyelid. So in the fourth, we should open the eyes completely. And in the last one, we move down both lower eyelids. And now let's select all the keyframes and let's make Choicic make its magic. You can name it Iric. And now let's position our controller and start testing it. Well, apparently it looks good enough for me. Time to rig the eyebrows. So it's quite the same thing as we did with the eyelids. The first keyframe should be a neutral expression. For the second, I will make him look angry. For the third one, it will be sad. And in the last keyframes, we just make one eyebrow up and one down for each side, like if he is suspicious of something happening to his face rig. So now check your keyframes, select them and let's make the new controller. You can name it Eyebrow Rig, for example. Well, let's try this out. It looks perfect to me. Let's try the others as well. So, I think it looks good enough, but there's something that I really don't like and it's the beard. So, I'm, so I'm just going to mask it. Okay, so now I will go to the mouth composition and see how it goes. Well, apparently the wrinkles in the side are not following properly the mouth shape. So I will just continue without them for now. Okay, so there's actually something that I've been supposed to do before rigging the mouth, but no worries. You can just select the controller and click on this button to unlink the controller. And like you can see, you can customize your keyframes again and just delete your controller just to not get confused. So now this is the second most important step in this tutorial. We select our lips layer and you click on path. And we go to this window again, but now we don't click on points follow nose, but on nose follow points. So like you see, it created us these nodes. Try to change their scale to make it more practical. So actually we will only need the node below, so that's why I will hide the other ones. Well, now we can actually create a controller again, so just the same process as before. Adjust your controller and start testing if everything is okay. You can notice now that the null is perfectly following the lower lip and that's what we want. So now we will select the mouth composition from here and we will drag it below the main composition, just like this. Now we select the null and press P to show the position. So what we want is that when this null moves, the chin will follow. Before doing that, if we go to the main composition, you will realize that we don't have the mouth controller, because it's inside the mouth composition, and we want it to be in the main comp. So for that, you just go to the mouth composition, select the controller, and then in the bottom of joystick and sliders window, you will see this option, move joystick to parent comp. So if you click here, you will choose the main comp, and then click on to parent. And now, you will notice that the controller is turned red, and it's because you can't control it from here. But if you go to the main comp, you will realize that you have the controller here. So just adjust it to your screen and start testing it.
If we look at the position of this null, you will see that it's in red, so you can't actually move it. That's why we had to create this null here that we called chimp. So the position shows in blue. That means we can change it. So the thing is that we want that this null follows the null of the mount, but not in every direction, only the Y value. So for that, we click on the position property, we right click on it and choose separate dimensions. So now you will have the X value and the Y value separately. So we alt click on the Y property and then you link it to the null in the composition of the mouth, but don't drag it in the null layer or in the position property name, but in the second value, because we only want the Y value. And now if you go to the main comp, you will see that our man just did a surgery to his jaw. So what you can do, you just go to the null and you change the expression a little bit by adding minus 200, for example. And let's see, well, apparently the second surgery didn't go as planned. So no problem, let's just reduce the value, let's say minus 150. Well, it looks perfect to me, just like the first time we met. So if you are a crazy perfectionist, before you change the values, you can add a ruler and adjust it exactly where you want. And then let's make the same process. Let's make it minus 150 again. Well, it's nearly the same, but if you are a weirdo, you can start changing the values. Just to be clear, this is not maybe the perfect way to do it. So you can definitely try and experiment new things. And maybe I can learn something from you as well. Okay, so now let's try this out. Well, I think it's good enough for me. So before I start testing all the controllers, select the mouth comb and bring it back where it was to make more space. If you accidentally drag the composition in a weird spot and you didn't know how to fix it, no worries, just go to window, then workspace. You will see reset default to save layouts. If you press on it, you will have the default states of all your windows. Ok, so let's try all the controllers at once. Well, it looks wonderful. Well guys, there's something I forgot to do, and it's the controller for the poppers. But I will just use a null. So we create a null and we put it in between the eyes. Then choose both popels and link them to the null. And we will link this null to the one we created before called face movement null. So now, if we move the controller of the head, the null will follow. And now we can move the popels by moving this null. But like you see, there's just one problem. They shouldn't go outside the eyeballs. So we will do the same thing as we did for the eyelids. We use set mat and select the eyeballs as masks. And now they are perfectly inside. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you learned something from this tutorial. And if I can help you out in some way or another, let me know in the comments below. I wasn't thinking to make a tutorial, but I thought that this one could be helpful for some people. And for those who are wondering, yes, I will activate my windows. You can find links of some of my works in the description below. So again, thank you for watching and take care. What's going on?
on here? Uh, I'm trying to tell you. You're making a big mistake, you people. This kid is a liar. I know it. I know all about them. 